Hello, it's Dr. Mintz. I want to go over a case of a patient with subarachnoid hemorrhage, and this is a 50-year-old female, and we'll just get a quick overview here first. A couple things to notice. First of all, you see that there is some high attenuation material in the basal cisterns. That is first and foremost the important description. You have high attenuation here in the superior cerebellar cisterns, you have in the supracellar cistern rather, supracellar cistern, you have high attenuation material in the interpeduncular cistern. Here are the peduncles, just getting into the peduncles there. Let's see, uh, go up a little bit higher. Here we are again. There's the interpeduncular system. You have high attenuation material, and that's blood, hemorrhage uh, in the quadrigeminal cistern, and the lateral parts of which are sometimes called the ambient cistern. You see blood in the subarachnoid space of the sylvian fissures bilaterally. Here you see a little bit creeping into one of the sulci in the inferior frontal lobe. And there's also some blood tracking in the interhemispheric fissure anteriorly. Okay, so that's all consistent with subarachnoid hemorrhage. All right, look in the ventricles. This is a very important observation to make. You see the little levels there? You see the little hyperdense material? The ventricle actually goes back here. So this little bit of hyperdense material here and here is blood layering out in the dependent aspect of the lateral ventricles. This is a very good shot showing the amount of blood in the prepontine cistern. Let's go down a little bit lower, and you see a lot of blood in the prepontine cistern. Look in the fourth ventricle. The fourth, fourth ventricle is dilated. See that? It's abnormally large. And you have this high attenuation material. That's a blood clot in the fourth ventricle. Okay. So that's the, all the findings of subarachnoid blood, and very often the blood gets into the ventricular system. What I want to also point out here is look at the size of the lateral ventricles, and then compare them with what you see of the sulci. The lateral ventricles are prominent, fairly large, moderately large at least, and the sulci are completely effaced. So this is not the baseline level of these ventricles. They're usually smaller. In other words, if this were the state of the patient's ventricles normally, you would not expect a 50-year-old to have cortical sulci that are completely effaced, you would be able to see the cortical sulci. So this tells you that this ventricular size is a result of obstruction and obstruction from the subarachnoid blood, which may indicate blood obstructing the outlet of the fourth ventricle. And you remember there are two outlets. One is the midline magendi, foramen of magendi, and the other is the lateral lushkas, the foramina of lushka on both sides. So that would presumably underline the size, underlie the size of the ventricles, which is increased here. And it's important to see the discrepancy between the size of the lateral ventricles and the third ventricle and fourth ventricle, which are moderately large, to that of the cortical sulci, which are basically completely absent. And that indicates that the ventricles are dilating to such an extent that they're increasing the pressure of the hemispheres and squeezing the little bit of CSF out of the sulci that was there prior to the hemorrhage.